Hey everyone, this is Victor from Growth Evolution Development Ground, gedground.com. The topic of today's video is ego. What is ego? Is it there to help us or is it there to control us? Now, ego is a pretty common topic of discussion, but not everybody knows what exactly it is. Some people think that it's inherently bad, but how can we say this? If it exists, there must be a reason for it, just like there is for everything else, right? Well, to begin with, it's important to dissect the term itself. What is ego? From the moment we're born, we begin to experience the ego. We, as small toddlers, we crawl around and we put things into our mouth and that's how we introduce the world to us. And whenever something is taken away from us we begin to cry we scream we cry and we kind of demand it back in our own baby language and this is the the birth of ego this is how the ego is born in us and the more we grow up uh, the more the ego develops with us um, our parents start they tell us that we can't have everything and we cry again and the ego increases and at one point we realize that our parents tell us that you can have something but only if you do something so then we realize that certain actions bring desired results and our ego again grows with us increases it evolves it evolves just like we evolve and this is where it becomes uh, more serious now that we know that we can earn something by by doing a certain action we know that we're entitled to have this thing we have rightfully deserved it and if now somebody removes this from us this is where we get really angry and upset we may physically try to hurt someone to return this thing to us or we may uh, use language or just scream again so the ego, it, there's really many levels to it. It grows just the way we grow. And the bottom line of ego, what it is, is basically the separation of us from the world, from the rest of the world. So we, we have us and we have everything around us. And we know that we are different from everything else. And that's how, that's the, the core of what ego is. Of course, it manifests itself in very many different ways. But the idea is that the ego is there to uh, show the difference that uh, we are a separate entity from everything else. Now, there is the, what I call the ego paradox, because the ego, carries uh, a certain amount of benefits for us and a certain amount of dangers. And I want to talk a little bit about the benefits first. And, and as you can probably understand, the ego is there for a reason. And without the ego, we cannot survive. If we would not have the ego, the sense, the feeling that we deserve something, the feeling that I want to do this in order to feel better, the feeling of I, I, me. If we wouldn't have any of this, we would not be interested in earning money, in being good in school. We would not be interested in having friends. We would, we would, we would basically, we would not be able to survive in the world. And we would not be able to survive and socialize with any, anyone else. And, um, It really wouldn't be possible to grow up uh, with with absolutely no ego. We would seem like uh, insane people to somebody else because what the ego also does, it creates certain fears. For example, we cling on to the idea of the self, of the identity, and therefore we're scared of death. And if we would have no ego, we would not be scared of death. Therefore, we would not be afraid of being eaten by... Um, by wild animals or um, being killed by someone else. So the ego is obviously there uh, for a reason. And although many people prefer to think that 
ego is inherently bad, it's all about me, 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 it's actually not like that at all. Because although it does create the self, the sense of identity in us, it's not all as simple as that. Because when we grow up, we understand that we have our parents and we have maybe siblings. And our ego naturally expands its borders. It's not only about ourselves, but it's also about our family. And sometimes we're willing to go over our ego for the benefit of our relatives. We're able to help them even maybe when we don't want to do so. So, and this is, not, this is so to say, it comes with the pack. This is something that the majority of us experience. Uh, growing up in a family we don't care only about ourselves but we do care about the closest relatives um, the closest people around us uh, moreover we get into a relationship and uh, and we begin to experience ego loss and I don't mean here ego death what some people experience during uh, very profound experiences with meditation or with uh, ing ingestion of psychedelic drugs but I mean a partial ego loss because when we get into a relationship we may fall in love and being in love is is probably the easiest way to uh, reach a certain amount of ego uh, ego loss because in this case we are mm, we are intoxicated with the feeling of love and suddenly we don't mean so much we don't mean almost at all like anything to ourselves because we care so much for the other person we are able to do crazy and insane and also maybe even dangerous things for the benefit of the other person and the people who are not in love and maybe haven't ever experienced in love they may look at us and completely not understand what we're doing we're doing irrational things but we, because we're in love we're uh, experiencing um, a very decreased amount of ego in ourselves we we obviously still have the ego but the ego has expanded towards the person who we're in love with not towards everyone else but it has expanded only in one direction but nevertheless the emphasis is not only on ourselves anymore but on the person who we care about and um, also the ego continues to grow when we uh, when we get get our own families and we suddenly have children and here uh, the children they are our children so in a sense our ego expands onto them also and because they are our children it's kind of again the ego talking we 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 feel as if they are us basically we care for them as much as we would care for ourselves for ourselves and so for this reason I'm saying that the ego is not as simple as all oh, it's all about me 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 that person is egotistic he doesn't care about anything no uh, the ego is a lot more complicated and there are cases when the ego is able to expand and this is part of our nature now some people will argue that you can feel the uh, you can be compassionate and feel love about uh, towards your own for example the house you live in the neighborhood and the country uh, that you live in now here is where the dangers of the ego come come in this is where the problem starts because some people will argue that love for all people and love for your own country is the same thing well actually it's not and it can be the very opposite because when you uh, when you love everyone you see that everything is one you don't differentiate between anybody everybody is equally important to you when you love your own country you're usually you usually have some kind of a reason for this maybe this uh, carries some historical significance for the country you live in uh, maybe it's cultural, something else, and you are automatically seeing your country more special than other countries. And this is the nationalistic approach. And sometimes, if if this is taken on a different level, 
then you it can be even take it can even become racism where you um, you love your own race and you hate the other races so if love for all people is driven by love where you see everybody is one the uh, love for your own country for example uh, in the form of nationalism is can be driven or is driven by ego and um and is actually um, the root of it all is not love for everyone, but the differentiation of your own people from the others. So the re the the difference is actually very significant between just being able to care and love for everyone, and loving for um, for a certain thing, for a certain group of people, or for a certain thing. And this example is pretty extreme and pretty obvious, but anything driven by the ego is actually harmful to us. It's detrimental to us. It, it causes problems. For example, you may, um, you may wish to be more successful and you have high ambitions and then you start succeeding in these things. And although you had um, a good reason, you wanted to do it for yourself, Often people get caught up and they see the amount of hard work they put into something and they feel that um, they feel that it makes them special and they begin to look down on other people because the amount of hard work they put, they really see that it is a lot of hard work and the other people didn't do it. Therefore, I deserve more respect. And this is how you sometimes can see people walking with their chins up really confident but in a kind of an arrogant way this is the ego in them another example is for you can have your children and you really love them or your spouse and you love them so much that you suddenly start um, that you see them above everybody else above all the other children maybe you've heard um, maybe even your own parents or you've seen some other parents they think that Oh, my child never does anything wrong, although the, he or she is in the group of people that are all doing something wrong. And they prefer to think that it's the fault of everybody else. And my child is no, in no way doing this. And this can also even cause hate or anger towards other uh, children or other men or women. And this is, again, a very common type of ego in us. And um, another example you can read a book right you want to become more intelligent you read a book and then you feel like you've gotten in the information that you need and then you use it to against someone to in a certain situation to make somebody feel bad about themselves again this is ego and um you can think you're maybe altruistic and you're trying to um, you help a friend doing something maybe you help them move into a new apartment and you subconsciously you expect them to help you back at some point you've helped them so they should help me and then they don't help you on at the moment when you needed it the most and maybe they had a good reason why they wouldn't help you at that moment but you don't care because you felt like they needed to help you again this can break your relationship and really uh, ruin it and this is this is a very common scenario and this is again the ego and you can also make art or music and you think that it's uh, better than somebody else's this is ego uh, you can easily be offended by a small joke somebody made at, like said to you that really wasn't supposed to hurt you but it did hurt you and you're offended by that that's your ego you don't want to give something up for some reason you think you worked hard for it that is ego uh, and you're you're in a relationship and you feel like right at this moment i don't feel like the person deserves me saying that i love you and you don't say it that's ego or then you do say i love you and then you expect the other person to say in return to you i love you this is also ego and you buy better you buy clothes and you feel good about yourself for that again you're increasing your ego and um finally one other common example is addictions all addictions are, are ve a very serious type of ego and now you may think to yourself that so what victor these things are all part of life it's normal and i will agree with you it's normal but it doesn't 
make them great because the th problem is that ego makes you cling on to things you have the identity and you're clinging on to yourself and that's okay you know like i said earlier there is death and you don't want to die and it's uh, it's normal to want to live so you're clinging on to yourself but you're also clinging on to other things and you're clinging like onto your own identity and hope that nobody's going to offend you or nobody's going to steal from you and the bottom line is that the more you cling onto things the more suffering you will have the ego no matter how you look at it it causes suffering and this is visible in us when we're children and we have our lollipop taken away from us we begin crying our ego um, our ego is here we we grow up more we receive a bad grade and we we don't like it and we're angry about it maybe we're frustrated with the teacher our ego a girl tells us that uh, she doesn't like me and she likes somebody else instead here the ego is really um, really seriously damaged and uh, when you grow up even more you may go to a job interview and then you don't get a follow-up phone call and you don't get accepted to to the new job and you're thinking to yourself they didn't even call me and i really deserved that job i was perfect for that position here the again the ego is very much um affected and all of these things they all have in common what they all have in common is they cause us to suffer they feel very bad for us for us and as i said the ego started with something simple like somebody taking away our pacifier or our lollipop to things like um being rejected at work so the ego evolves with us it grows with us it becomes more complicated and um and it kind of ex makes you expect more from life. And finally, like I said already a few times, if you're afraid of death, um, this is again your ego. And it's normal to be afraid of death because that allows us to have the self-preservation instinct. So we wouldn't run and allow a bear to eat us or we wouldn't cut off our, our hand uh, just, you know, and let a hungry animal uh, feed a hungry animal with it uh, we try to save ourselves in all possible situations and this is normal but regardless of all of that it's our ego and it causes fear in us and it causes us to suffer now those were the uh, the benefits and the dangers and now can we do something about it does it even make sense to do anything about the ego as we understand there are problems and there are benefits and there are certain things that we can't get around and we shouldn't get around like the uh, fear of death because you know who knows what we will be doing if we are not afraid of death anymore and again if we get rid of all ego we won't be able to um, uh, we won't be able to be uh, to function in the society and many people like i already said they prefer to think that the ego is inherent inherently bad and that you should get rid of it but uh and, and many religions address this idea directly they um the buddhism talks about the ego and uh christianity teaches us not to be proud and to be humble and it's funny that many religions do talk about ego but they are also the ones that sometimes cause the biggest amount of ego in people to uh, be created and um, people that have a lot of ego in them they're called egotist egotistic people you've probably seen them they're very angry arrogant they're very confident even when they're wrong they don't prefer to listen to you they prefer to talk they're always right and never wrong and they're well they're kind of annoying to be around because uh, a person with a big ego not the nicest thing ever but the thing is that it's it's not and if you do also feel that maybe sometimes you act like that sometimes you know we all may be wrong but we don't want to um, we don't want to show that we're wrong and we still fight for our position even though we know we're wrong we, we are wrong and this is the ego and if you see yourself, uh, you see this image inside of you, 
then it, the thing is that you can't get completely rid of ego. Well, most of us will probably never be able to do it, but you can certainly improve yourself. And the easy way out or the easiest way to approach this is to become aware aware of the reality that you live in. Be aware of the fact that everything is subjective, that everything is relative. Something may be right to you and the same thing might be wrong to another person. And if you're always aware of that and you're never, and you know that people are different based on different cultures or nationalities or whatever, and you're aware of the fact that uh, any experience may be looked at from many different sides, that's when you become aware and that's when the ego begins to lose its grip on you. And if you really want to um, be practical about it and actually start practicing to dissolve your ego, then you should really consider, consider meditation. When you meditate, you silence your mind and you are able to perceive the things around you as they are so you, you 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 get rid of you don't analyze anymore you don't put your own subjective ideas and subjective thoughts onto the things you are looking at instead you're looking and experiencing things as they are of course it will take some time for you to become good with meditation but if you start already now for a little while daily meditating like five minutes the sooner you're going to start dissolving the ego and like I said, meditation is extremely effective and it's probably the most practical way to come about it. What I have also noticed that when I meditated very much, I also became more aware in life when I wasn't meditating, like in the bus, walking on the street, talking to other people. It's like a side effect, a good byproduct of meditation. You become aware in your ignorance and your arrogance uh, fade away a little bit because you're more aware you understand that we're all different and it's kind of hard to be egotistic all the time about things so there is a, a way um, out of it it's not it's not perfect you're not going to be completely uh, you're not going to get completely rid of ego but you can to a certain extent and that's enough uh, to be able to function in the world and stay uh, stay like very balanced and positive and the thing is that there's really no other ways to dissolve ego well you can always probably go to a psychiatrist but it's will be a lot more helpful if you start working on it daily by yourself already by becoming aware by meditation and if you don't dissolve the ego in any way to any extent it's only going to get stronger as you grow you've probably noticed how when when there's a, a small you know a child a kid you can really quickly um, cause unbalanced uh, an unbalanced condition in them they can scream really quickly they can laugh again and then when the, the older the person gets the more stable their ideas and thoughts get and the, more, the harder it is to shatter them and that's because they're they have stabilized in who they are and that's when the ego has formed really well and that's going to be harder to change so the earlier you start you're going to start the better and like i said there is meditation and being uh, aware and you don't have to be a monk right you don't have to be a monk and you to and meditate 24 7 day and night to um to be to be perfect so to say if you have plans for your future then it's enough for you to be aware to a certain extent to as much as you can be because think about it um if you're a, if you want to become a monk you're gonna the only way to dissolve completely ego is by you meditating all the time being in this super extremely awareful state and you're not going to be able to do much more but if you're having high uh, ambition still you want to um, you want to help the world do good things you want to do self-development you want to raise children then it's enough to uh, balance things in life and it's enough to realize that you don't need to you shouldn't cling on to things and you should uh, meditate so you don't really need to be a monk that's not the path for everyone although uh, some people do take that path uh, there's a lot of buddhist monks who um, all they do is basically they try to dissolve their 
um, ego. And uh, also, actually, the Bible also points to this a little bit by saying that it's not it's the uh, love of money that is the root of all evil. It's the love of it, not the money itself. So you can have the money and you can do good things with it. And as long as you don't cling on to it, you're not uh, poisoned by the uh, the negative aspects of what ego has in it. And, um, and lastly, well, I wanted to I want to just say that I hope you understand at least to an extent what ego is, and you don't need to run around and try to get rid of it right now. But if you're aware of it, that already is a big big plus because the majority of people are actually not even aware that the ego is controlling them that their anger that their hatred jealousy envy is all caused by their um, their ego and again the ego is there to protect us it is there to make us better but if if not um, not taken care of not noticed it can also uh, damage us and and not allow us to be genuinely happy. Uh, but we have to understand that it's just there, it's part of life. It's not right or wrong, it's there just like breathing oxygen is or, um, or eating food. So all in all, it's a complicated topic and uh, I think the best way to approach it is by by noticing it in you. When is the ego there? Next time when somebody says something to you and you feel annoyed by it the way you usually do, take a step back, think about it for a second and think, why exactly am I feeling this way? Is there really something that uh, negative in what the other person said to you? And uh, by living this way more and more, you will dissolve your ego little by little and certain things that now uh, drive you nuts they will you will laugh at them later when you just realize how silly they are so that was about it i hope you've liked this video and if you have please like it for me uh, write your comments tell me what you think about uh what think about what you think about the ego maybe you have your own experiences you want to share i like i like to read comments um i like when people respond i interaction is always good and um if you feel like it, subscribe for more similar content in the future. And I hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.